Dr. Mark Ross, uh, Professor of Neurology at Mayo Clinic, Arizona. I work in the area of neuromuscular and um, take care of ALS patients. ALS is a, a serious illness because it um, can affect any adult patient, men and women, um, any age. Typically, average onset is about age 55, but there are certainly younger patients and older patients that get this. And it is a serious illness because the disorder causes loss of the motor nerve cells in the brain and the spinal cord, and as a result, patients develop progressive muscle weakness and loss of function because of that. And it also affects the breathing muscles, and patients develop problems with breathing as a result of this. And unfortunately, we don't have a cure for ALS, so our therapies are really supportive type therapies. She was diagnosed in June of 2012. The Mayo had her breathing tested, uh, and she just was willing to try anything to maintain where she was at, uh, or to prevent her from go going any, from, from prevent her from getting any weaker in her diaphragm. The diaphragm pacing stimulator is a device that will allow electrical stimulation of the diaphragm to improve the diaphragm function and, and maintain the diaphragm function for a longer period of time. In order to qualify for this particular device, a patient has to already have evidence that their respiratory muscles are weak, and they also have to have evidence that their phrenic nerves are still working so that the diaphragm can be stimulated. So those two things, we have specific criteria, but basically they have to have loss of about 50 percent of their breathing capacity and they have to have diaphragms that can still be electrically stimulated. She heard about the device through Janie at the Mayo, her nurse, and, uh, and, Dr. Ross. and Dr. Ross, and she was immediately interested in being a part of the procedure to try it out. Well, Vicki was in fact an ideal candidate because she had this circumstance where her right diaphragm wasn't moving at all voluntarily, but we were able to electrically stimulate it. So just to go over that point a little bit and explain that, any muscle movement requires a signal from the brain that travels down to the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord to the muscle. So it's sort of a two-chain pathway. We call the signal that comes from the brain to the spinal cord the upper motor neuron and the signal from the spinal cord to the muscle, the lower motor neuron. So in her case, the signal wasn't getting from the brain to the spinal cord, but everything was working well from the spinal cord on. So the phrenic nerve that goes from the spinal cord to the, brain, to the, to the muscle was working just fine. And so even though she couldn't voluntarily activate the diaphragm, it could be electrically stimulated. So that's where this diaphragm pacing system is ideal, that we can use an electrical stimulation to keep the diaphragm working at a time where it would have stopped working or actually wasn't working on its own. And so the idea with this is that the electrical stimulation will allow the diaphragm to maintain its function for a longer period of time, and in Vicki's case, will actually improve her breathing function and allow her to breathe better on her own for a longer period of time. And as a result, quality of life has improved. She doesn't develop the kinds of breathing problems that would have come. And her life, we think, is extended. The, the longer you know, that the diaphragm is working, the longer she's able to keep going. Surgery and in place, it, placing it in there, she, it's a very quick recovery. She didn't have any, any problems, anything like that. It was very simple procedure. We go in laparoscopically. Um, they get uh, four small incisions on the belly or the abdomen. Uh, we go in with a camera and then we use a special device to map the diaphragm and to see where the diaphragm contracts best. Uh, we want to place the electrodes where we can stimulate the diaphragm for the best contraction and that gives them the best ability then to get a good deep breath when the stimulator is turned on. There's an outlet here that was implanted in her stomach that connects to her diaphragm and she just plugs in. And then, um. As far as this device and being the caregiver, it's very self-sufficient. She can do it all on her own. We, we don't help her really at all. She plugs in, plugs out. 
all on her own. She is really, you know, doing everything she can to maintain normal life. She's continuing to work, um, and I think that, you know, that's just absolutely wonderful that she has that interest in getting out there and just living her life. It's showing positive results, so it's just giving you that much more hope and faith that things are going in the right direction.